Chapters 6 through 10 of the Book of Deuteronomy from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. The Book of Deuteronomy, Chapters 6 through 10. Chapter 6 and these are the commands and constitutions and decrees which your ever-living god commands you to learn to practice in the land to which you will pass over to possess so you must fear your ever-living god and preserve all the constitutions and commandments which i command you you and your children and the children of your children all the time of your life listen therefore israel and keep and practice them so that you may prosper and so that you may increase greatly as your ever-living god promised to your fathers upon entering into the land flowing with milk and honey listen israel our ever-living god is a single life therefore love your ever-living god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and let these words that i command you today be in your heart and teach them to your sons and speak about them when sitting in your house and in traveling on your journeys and when lying down and when rising up bind them also as ornaments upon your hands and as frontlets between your eyes and write them upon the doors of your house and upon your gates and then when your ever-living god brings you to the country which he promised to your fathers to abraham to isaac and to jacob to give to you great and beautiful cities that you built not and houses full of furniture that you did not make and many fortresses which you did not fortify vineyards and olive yards which you did not plant where you may eat and be satisfied take care to yourselves lest you forget the ever-living who brought you from the land of the mitzraim from the house of bondage fear your ever-living god and serve him and swear by his name you must not go after other gods than god those of the peoples around you for your ever-living god is a jealous god guard yourselves lest the anger of your ever-living god should burn against you and he should destroy you from off the face of the land you shall not try your ever-living god as you tried him in massa you shall carefully preserve the commands of your ever-living god and his proofs and his constitutions that he ordered you and you shall practice justice and right in the sight of the ever-living so that you may prosper and possess that beautiful country where the ever-living promised to your fathers to repulse all your enemies before you as the ever-living will do when your son inquires of you hereafter asking why did the ever-living god order these proofs and constitutions and decrees for you you shall answer to your son we were slaves to pharaoh in mitzraim and the ever-living brought us out from among the mitzraites with a strong hand and the ever-living produced great wonders and portents and inflicted sufferings on the mitzraites upon pharaoh and upon all his family in our sight but brought us from there and brought us up to give us this country which he had promised to our fathers therefore the ever-living commanded us to practice all these constitutions and to fear our ever-living god for our benefit all the time of our lives as at this day and it is right for us that we should continue to practice the whole of these commands before our ever-living god as he commanded us chapter seven for your ever-living god will bring you to the country which you are now going to seize to plunder nations more numerous than yourselves the kithites and the gershonites and the amorites and the canaanites and the perizzites and the hivites and the jebusites seven nations more numerous and stronger than yourselves whom your ever-living god will deliver up before you and you will defeat them destroy them and make no treaty with them and do not pity them do not marry with them give not your daughter to his son nor take his daughter for your son for it will turn your heart from following me and you will serve other gods when the anger of the ever-living will burn against you and he will destroy you quickly consequently you shall do this to them you shall throw down their altars and break their columns and smash their shrines and melt their cast images in the fire because you are a people devoted to your ever-living god 
your ever-living god chose you to be a people for himself separated from all the peoples who are upon the face of the earth has he not increased you more than all the peoples the ever-living did not unite with you because you were the most numerous of the peoples but chose you when you were the least of all the peoples and the ever-living loved you because of keeping the oath which he swore to your fathers therefore the ever-living brought you out with a strong hand and freed you from the house of bondage from the hand of pharaoh king of the mitzraim therefore know that the ever-living is god the god who faithfully keeps his covenant and shows favor to those who love him and regard his commands for a thousand generations but repays his enemies those who hate him to their face by destroying them he will not delay to repay those who hate him to their face therefore preserve the commandments and the constitutions and the decrees which i command you today and practice them for there will be a reward if you listen to these decrees and preserve and practice them for your ever-living god will keep the covenant and the favor which he promised to your fathers and will love you and bless you and increase the fruit of your body and the fruit of your grounds your corn your grapes and your oil your cattle shall breed and your sheep bring forth upon the ground which he promised to your fathers to give to you you shall be more blessed than any people neither male nor female shall be sterile among you nor your cattle barren and the ever-living will turn from you every disease and sickness of the mitzurites the sufferings that you know he will not lay them upon you but will put them on all who hate you therefore you shall consume all the peoples whom your ever-living god gives to you your eyes shall not have pity on them nor serve their gods for they will be your snare if however your heart should say to you these nations are more numerous than i i am not able to dispossess them fear them not remember what your ever-living god did to pharaoh and to all the mitzurites the great calamities that your eyes saw and the wonders and the portents and the strong hand and the directing arm with which your ever-living god brought you out your ever-living god will do the same to all the peoples before whom you are afraid your ever-living god will also send upon them fever to destroy the remnants who hide themselves from you you shall not be pursued by them for your ever-living god is among you a great god of light your ever-living god however will drive these nations before you little by little you shall not be able to master them quickly for fear the beasts of the field should multiply upon you but your ever-living god will displace them before you and dissolve with much confusion until they perish and he will deliver their kings to your hand and you shall destroy their names from under the skies not a man can stand before you until you have desolated them you shall burn their carved gods with fire you shall not desire the gold and silver they are made of or take it for yourselves for fear you should be ensnared by it for you must serve the ever-living he is your god therefore you shall not bring their foul practices into your house but you shall be pure for what contaminated them will contaminate you and what defiled them will defile you therefore be pure chapter eight you must regard all the commands that i order you today in practice so that you may live and increase and go to seize the country that the ever-living promised to your fathers but remember how all the way your ever-living god led you these forty years in the desert to try you to prove you to examine you whether you would keep his commands from your heart or not therefore he afflicted you and hungered you and fed you with manna which you had not known nor had your fathers known so that he might teach you that man lives not by bread alone but that man lives by all that comes from the mouth of the ever-living your clothes were not rags nor your feet shoeless in those forty years and you knew in your heart that as a man instructs his son your ever-living god instructed you therefore keep the commands of your ever-living god and walk in his paths and fear him for your ever-living god brings you to this beautiful land a land of brooks of water springs and torrents coming out of the valleys and out of the hills a country of wheat and barley and vines and figs and pomegranates a land of olive oil and honey a country where you will not eat from stores bread shall never fail at all in it 
a land where the rocks have iron and from whose hills you can dig copper where you can eat and fill yourselves and bless your ever-living god over the beautiful land he has given to you take care of yourselves lest you should forget the ever-living your god only keep his commandments and decrees and institutions which i command you today for fear when you eat and are full and have built yourselves beautiful houses and reside in them and your cattle and your sheep multiply and your silver and gold have increased and all your possessions have grown and your heart rises that you might forget your ever-living god who brought you up out of the land of the mitzrayim from the house of bondage who led you through this great desert where you saw the fiery serpents and scorpions and the dry waterless land where he brought you water from the flinty rock feeding you in the desert with manna which neither you nor your fathers had known so that he might try you with the purpose of ultimately benefiting you however may say to your heart i have obtained this power by my own courage and the vigor of my hands yet remember it was your ever-living god who gave you that courage and granted that power so that he might establish the covenant which he swore to your fathers as he does to-day but if ever it comes that you forget your ever-living god and go after other gods and serve and worship them i bear witness to you to-day that you shall perish like the nations the ever-living destroyed from before you thus you shall perish because you did not listen to the voice of your ever-living god chapter nine listen israel you are about to cross the jordan to seize nations greater and more powerful than yourself great cities fortified up to the skies a people great and tall sons of the anakim whom you know and of whom you said who can stand before the sons of anak but i bear witness to-day that your ever-living god who goes before you as a consuming fire he will devastate them and he will defeat them before you and you shall drive out and destroy them from the hills as the ever-living commanded you when your ever-living god has driven them away from you think not to say to your heart for my righteousness the ever-living has brought me to possess this country therefore the ever-living has driven out the nations who possessed it before me not for your righteousness nor for the rectitude of your heart did you come to possess their country but because of the wickedness of those nations your ever-living god drove them out before you and for the same reason he established the covenant which he swore to your fathers to abraham to isaac and to jacob consequently learn that your ever-living god has not given you to possess that beautiful country because of your righteousness for you are a stiff-necked people remember forget not how you have provoked your ever-living god in the desert from the day he brought you out of the land of the mitzrayim until you arrived at this spot you have been rebels against the ever-living in horeb also you provoked the ever-living and the ever-living was angry with you to destroy you when i went up the mountain to receive the two tables of stone the tables of the covenant which the ever-living made with you when i stayed forty days and forty nights eating no bread and drinking no water when the ever-living gave to me the two tables of stone written by the finger of god and upon them all the commandments which the ever-living dictated to you on the hill from the midst of the fire at the time of the public assembly and there at the end of forty days and forty nights the ever-living gave to me the two tables of stone the tables of the covenant when the ever-living said to me arise go down from this hill for your people whom i brought out from among the mitzrayim have gone to corruption they have turned quickly from what i commanded them they have cast an idol for themselves the ever-living also spoke to me saying i have observed this people and see that it is a perverse people fly from me and i will destroy and sweep their name from under the heavens and i will make from you a powerful nation and a greater than they i consequently turned and descended from the hill and the hill burnt with fire but the two tables of stone were in my two hands then i looked and perceived that you had sinned against your ever-living god having made for yourselves a cast metal calf turning yourselves soon from the path which the ever-living commanded you so i raised the two tables and threw them from my two hands and broke them in your sight 
i afterwards fell before the ever-living as at first for forty days and forty nights i ate no bread nor drank water because of all the sin that you had sinned in doing wrong in the sight of the ever-living to provoke him for i was afraid in the presence of the anger and indignation which stirred the ever-living against you to destroy you but my ever-living god heard me again at that time the ever-living also was very angry with aaron and would have destroyed him but i prayed at the same time for aaron himself and your sin the calf that you had made i took and melted in fire and beat it grinding as small as fine dust and threw the dust upon the brook that flowed from the hill at tabara again and at massa and kimbroth hatava you were provoking the ever-living and when the ever-living sent to you at kadesh barnea an order saying go up and seize the country which i have given you again you rebelled against the order of your ever-living god and were not true to him and would not listen to his voice you were always rebels from the ever-living from the day i knew you i fell however before the ever-living for those forty days and those forty nights i fell down because the ever-living said he would destroy you but i prayed to the ever-living and said almighty lord do not wreck your people and your inheritance whom you redeemed by your greatness whom you brought up from the mitzrayim with a strong hand remember your servants abraham and isaac and jacob turn not to afflict this people for its wickedness and for its sin lest the country from which you brought them should say because the ever-living was not able to bring them to the land which he promised and because he hated them he brought them out to kill them in the desert they are also your people and your inheritance whom you brought out by your great power and with a directing arm chapter ten then the ever-living said to me cut two tables of stone like the former ones and come up to me on the hill also make an ark of wood and i will write upon the tables the commandments that were upon the former tables that you broke and you can put them in the ark i consequently made an ark of acacia wood and cut two tables of stone like the first ones and ascended the hill with the two tables in my hands and he wrote upon the tables the same writing as upon the former ones the ten commandments which your ever-living god proclaimed on the hill from amid the fire on the day of the public assembly then the ever-living gave them to me so i turned and descended from the hill and placed the two tables in the ark that i had made and they are there as the ever-living instructed me i then remained on the hill as at the previous time forty days and forty nights and the ever-living listened to me also again that he should not desire to wreck you so the ever-living said to me arise proceed march before the people and let them go on and seize the country which i promised to their fathers to give to them and now israel what your ever-living god asks of you is that you should fear your ever-living god and walk in all his ways and love him and serve your ever-living god with all your heart and all your life and to keep the commandments of the ever-living and all his institutions which i have commanded you this day for your own benefit look the heavens and the heaven of the heavens the earth and all it contains belong to your ever-living god yet the ever-living chose to love your fathers and he selected their race after them from all the peoples as at this day therefore circumcise the flesh of your hearts and never stiffen your necks for your ever-living god is a god of gods and almighty of almighties the great god the powerful and the enlightener who will not regard appearances and will not take bribes who does justice to the orphan and the widow and loves to give bread and clothes to the stranger therefore you should love the stranger for you were a stranger in the land of the mitzrayim fear your ever-living god serve him and hold to him and swear by his name he led you and he is your god who produced for you those great things and the revelations that your eyes saw your fathers went down to the mitzrayim as seventy persons and now your ever-living god has collected you as a multitude like the stars of the heavens the end of chapters six through ten of the book of deuteronomy recording by mark penfold